Hello everyone and welcome to The Reality Is. My name is Alicia. And my name is Sanjana. And before the show begins, we'd like to let viewers know that the values that are expressed on the show do not necessarily reflect the values of Close Look Productions. They are our values and ours alone. And we have, <laughs> and we also have a sponsor. I thought you were. I know. I'm oh. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And we have a sponsor, um, Surrey Honda. Big thanks to you. And please do check them out at SurreyHonda.com. And you can find them on 152nd Street and Fraser Highway. Yes, you can. <laughs> awesome. So now that all the logistics and housekeeping is out of the way, let's get started with the show. Um, so this week we are going to be talking about motivation um, mm -hmm. and kind of like the, uh, the context uh, in school. You know, people are back to school. Um, Don't oh remind me. <laughs> the, the I mean, reality. yeah, the reality is. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, people are back to school. And, you know, we, I'm curious how people are feeling about it and how, you know, how well they're doing um, during pandemic times. And what that means is, you know, their motivation to do well, their motivation to, um, you know, go to class, their mm -hmm. motivation to do well and things like that, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, we want to talk a little bit about um, intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. Mm -hmm. And can you kind of define what that is? Yeah, so, you know, intrinsic is kind of like internal. Mm -hmm. It's your internal motivation. Um, it comes from, you know, engaging an activity that you really, really are passionate about, mm -hmm. that you really like, you have an interest in already. Um, and a lot of times people do it for fun and, you know, they, they don't think twice about it being a chore. Mm -hmm. So that's intrinsic. Oh, wow. Um, and then there's extrinsic. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know a little bit about extrinsic? I feel like it's more like you're trying to, um, you're trying to find some sort of like, um, I would say like passion or interest is kind of derived from um external rewards that you yeah. kind of get mm -hmm. instead of actual having that internal motivation yeah exactly yeah so extrinsic motivation comes from having to do a task or activity based on something that's monetary or some sort of punishment if you don't do it mm. um so for school it would be uh, i gotta study for this test i don't care about the material per se but i have to do it otherwise i'm gonna fail so mm -hmm. that's extrinsic. Internal or intrinsic is like, oh, I actually love this class. And the byproduct of doing well in this class is a good grade. Mm -hmm. But it comes after that, right? Mm -hmm. so, so first comes like the fact that they're actually interested in the material, yeah, right? Yeah, and that's, that's the first part of it is that they just, they naturally gravitate towards what they're doing mm -hmm. at the beginning. Um, so let's talk about our experience with yeah. these motivations in terms of our school system. Mm -hmm. So, Sanjana, can you tell us a little bit about, like, how maybe what motivation you kind of lean towards right now at school? Mm -hmm. So I feel like teachers are trying really hard to make it more intrinsic Ooh, because, cool. yeah, I know, I'm like, thank you, teachers. That's actually really progressive. Yeah. I don't think a lot of people would say that that mm -hmm. happened in th their time in school. Yeah. Like, Dan, camera operator, like, what do you think? Nah. <laughs> Not really. It was just like do do good because you have to for, yeah. for grades and stuff, right? Yeah, and you gotta impress the parents and mm -hmm. yeah. No, but right now I feel like um, my teachers are working really hard to kind of make it more intrinsic because they're working with you to make sure that you're developing mm -hmm. and they actually try to see like how much are you progressing in the class opposed to like what's your mark right now. Um, you know, whatever you've gone right now is gonna affect your end mark, but now they're actually basing your grade off of your progress mm -hmm. um, and seeing if you're actually applying um, what you're learning each time that you okay. get something back. Yeah, you know, my one of my cousins, she's, mm -hmm. now she's in grade 9, so she was telling me this, and I wasn't really sure if, um, you know, if this is a good idea, but it's a good example of intrinsic uh, motivation. It's basically like um, there are no, there's no homework, uh, there's no test. Wow. I mean, that's revolutionary. No <laughs> tests, no oh, homework. Um, it's sign all, me up. <laughs> yeah. But it's all based upon, um, you know, the feeling that you have towards the, the, the class and kind of like what you can tell the teacher what you've learned. It's kind mm -hmm. of like a test at the end. Mm -hmm. But it's all based upon, like, how you really think you did rather than based on numbers. 
mm-hmm. and percentages. I'm like, hmm, interesting. That's I don't amazing. Know, I don't know about that one, but <laughs> step in a different direction. I love that. Yeah, and it shows, like, the teachers are ready to put in that extra effort too, right? Because they really have to, like, make sure that you're progressing in class as well instead of just basing it off of numbers all the time, yeah. which is easier for them. But It's easier for them, but then I feel like they have to find some way to kind of make it make sense um, on the on the report card. Mm-hmm. Um, and that might take some time for, exactly. for intrinsic motivation to look extrinsically pleasing um, to, you know, p- to, if you're applying for university and things like that, there needs to be something for them to also see and, um, you know, assess, right, from students. Yeah. Um, so for me, I wanted to talk a little about my experience, mm-hmm. which is a little different. Um, mm-hmm. So for me, um, my university education was very, I, I would say, more intrinsically motivating than it, it was for other people in post-secondary. And the reason being is because um, I really enjoyed what I was learning. Like, I was, wow. like, happy to open up my textbook and learn about the things I was learning. And it wasn't a chore. It was um, appealing to me as a person. It applied to me. It had to do with the world at hand. So I had a really good connection and relationship with what I was learning. Mm-hmm. Um, but external motivation of course you have to take these courses to graduate you mm-hmm. have to take these courses they they affect your gpa and things like that right so uh, at the same time i can say i can kind of brag and say oh well <laughs> i really loved what i learned but given that it's like the school system there are a lot of external motivators that continue to exist um in that hemisphere for sure and do you feel like you're more motivated by the the fact that you know you're kind of worrying about your GPA as well or d- is it because you love what you're learning well you know when I'm looking at my courses mm-hmm. I'm like thank god I did well because <laughs> I just kind of took them and I did what I thought I I, I kind of did the bare minimum but it ended up you know giving me a nice grade at the end mm-hmm. because I loved it um, okay. so it, I mean it was a good byproduct the grade was a good byproduct but I was also in my head like oh this could have been worse if I was really just only taking these classes based on interest because mm-hmm. if you do something based on interest and you know if it's if the assessment is a grade you might get screwed over with a that's with, true. let's say with a C or or a D but you love what you're doing right mm-hmm. maybe mm-hmm. that's the downside of intrinsic motivators yeah that's true it's a good thing I feel like whenever you're like intrinsically I feel like I said that wrong but whenever you're motivated (laughs) from within I feel like you usually actually have like a good outward um result right yeah like your grades definitely improve that's all kind of seen Mm -hmm. in that aspect yeah so I think we also have a bit of a game to kind of go over what exactly intrinsic and extrinsic um motivation is and hopefully along the way I'll learn how to pronounce it (laughs) (laughs) you're doing great you're doing great thank you um so okay I'll I'll give you two examples of Mm -hmm. um like of a situation and you tell me if it's extrinsic or intrinsic and okay. these are my own examples so you have no idea what I'm going to say okay so I will start with the first example um so reading 15 books uh, you know you love to read but now reading 15 books means that you have a pizza party your classroom gets a pizza party oh <laughs> I was so busy celebrating um okay I feel like that's extrinsic um and I think the reason why is because what if you actually just like reading and now you have this pizza party that you're looking forward to so now your energy is going towards actually getting Getting that pizza pizza Pizza. and maybe you really like pizza but I think you're starting to shift your focus away from what you actually really like or originally liked which is just reading yes so it started off intrinsically but now it's obviously extrinsic because it's it went from your interest and passion for reading to uh, I just want my damn pizza (laughs) (laughs) relatable yeah so what's an example for me oh okay sorry I know I'm just like tell me you're so needy (laughs) okay um okay how about doing homework because it will make your parents happy but it will also make you happy because you're making your parents happy what's going on I feel like based on the ordering Mm -hmm. it's extrinsic I'm sure Mm -hmm. uh, hmm 
Yeah, I'm gonna say extrinsic, just because it's based upon some, um, you know, your 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 success is based upon someone else's um, expectations for you. So mm -hmm. you're just driven by someone else's expectations to do well in something. Yeah, exactly. Not just because you want to do well. Yeah. So. Yeah. Again, like you're putting in your, ha um, placing your happiness, like the factors that deal with your happiness in someone else's hands yeah. again. So yeah, that's definitely extrinsic. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those are some really good real life examples. I mean, I've definitely experienced that pizza party one. <laughs> it came from the heart. Um, <laughs> true story <laughs> by Alicia. Based on a true story. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's it's important to actually recognize this because it's, it's true. Like it's, you know, there's research out there that says that, um, that, Basically, students they perform better um, when they when they when they kind of use internal motivation um, to to go about school um, rather than external motivation. So they tend to actually perform better um, because they're we're basically wired to pursue what we love. Mm -hmm. um, so there's no other you know pressures or expectations that they don't really resonate with you mm -hmm. um, what resonates with you is the natural thing which is something that you love and something that you have passion in so yeah pursue something that makes you happy or if there's something in your life that is externally motivating find ways to find internal um motivation it will be easier for you to do that task mm -hmm, for sure and yeah easier and you'll be more successful sorry i have to say that too for yeah. sure <laughs> yeah you always kind of get better results when your heart's actually in mm -hmm. it right yeah. yeah yeah and yeah a similar study in 2008 um mm -hmm. some children were actually rewarded um to play with certain toys and they actually started drawing themselves away from that because now they're starting to actually um you, they they had so much passion and interest in actually playing with those toys, but now that they have another expectation kind of put on them mm -hmm. or a reward put on them, it doesn't seem as appealing. Yeah, and then just like a personal story, like because sometimes I would do like fundraisers, and I've noticed that people um, usually when there's like a fundraiser that's providing like the people who give a donation an award, they're less likely to actually donate money mm -hmm. um, than if you just tell them that it's for a good cause. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like they're so persuaded by the reward that they're getting that they're actually not putting in that time and energy to think about where that money's actually mm -hmm. going through the the ultimate cause yeah yeah totally i, I mean these things happen like in our day-to-day mm -hmm. uh, -day lives right so mm -hmm. uh, yeah it's it's really interesting again to like bring this to light and for us to catch when we're being externally motivated and inter internally intrinsically motivated mm -hmm. for sure and i did actually have a question so um People say that you should always kind of do what you love, but then what if you want to take that to next level and start doing it competitively? Is that a bad idea? That's interesting. Um, you know, and I want to go back to like the example that I brought up. Mm -hmm. So something that, you know, started off to be very interesting to you, very passionate, um, something that you just naturally gravitate towards. Um, when you add a reward to it, when you add, you know, monetary, um, you know, expectations to it, um, you kind of get more, you know, drawn to that, mm -hmm. you know, drawn to getting that reward or, or not getting that punishment. Mm -hmm. So the passion and the interest takes a back seat so that you can get the reward. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that, um, you know, for your question, it, it's, it's, it, you know, it, it might affect it uh, might affect your interest level like that you innately had like you naturally had because now you're competitively you're, you're you have a different relationship with that task um, you might not be as engaged with it before mm -hmm. than you are now um, and and you know sometimes people feel like they don't like it as much before because now they're just it's based upon that competitive edge or you know your your against other people that really mm -hmm. affects how you um maybe see that task now it might mm -hmm. be more of a chore it might be more of a job 
you know? Yeah, exactly. And especially if you're not getting the results that you want, then it can be really um, yeah. unmotivating. And it's it's actually doing the opposite of what you probably intended. Right? Yeah, and it's like before, it was just something you did. And now we're talking about competition. We're talking about results. We're talking about improvement. That stuff wasn't even in the picture. Mm-hmm. Now it is. Exactly. More things to worry about. And I feel like this also really ties in for high school students who are now like applying to university and they might start to think that they need to be in certain activities that give them an edge, but um, doesn't actually like um, coincide with what they're actually passionate about Mm -hmm. and they're really putting that aside and not actually getting the results that they want in the things that they think will make them look good so yeah I think it's always best to just do the things that you're really passionate about even if it seems difficult so yeah the reality of the situation is that you know you always get better results by doing things that you enjoy and it's just better for yourself as well your mental health and I think that's the most important thing to consider Mm -hmm. so really try to do things um out of your own motivation and the results will come um along with that yeah and yeah that was that was very beautifully said Sanjana um (laughs) sheds one tear um (laughs) and, and you know thank you thank you viewers for 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 tuning in every week uh it's always fun to kind of come up on on the platform pick something that really resonates with us Mm -hmm. and happens like in our everyday life um so that it's more realistic to actually talk about and then apply it into our own lives right um so before we go we are associated with close look productions they have their annual talent show happening in november uh registration is now open um and it ends this october 31st so please go to cluefoundation.org registration forms are there sign up musicians performers influencer influencers <laughs> influencers influencers anyone anyone who wants to take that opportunity to showcase their talents please do so um, we look forward to seeing your videos um, again thank you so much uh, and we'll see you on thursdays at six o'clock <laughs>